Good morning and welcome to Know the United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Kalisita Tuifua, greeting to you. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. As we continue to celebrate Jesus' resurrection and new life in the season of Easter, I invite you to join with me together with the California Pacific Conference. They have set up a worship for today with various people from different churches to lead us with music, prayers, sharing, and also preach the good news. There will be a sermon in English followed with the Tongan message before the closing hymn. I'm so grateful for the conference, for this opportunity that we are worshiping across the ocean with Hawaii District, with the North, East, West, and South District of our conference. So let us come together in the spirit of Jesus' resurrection, who Jesus lives and he's with us. For Christ is risen, he has risen indeed. O inasi he taa puaki pia moe koloa e whakahoko mai i he rea whakatonga e peheke rea whakapalangi i he ahoni. Ko ia, nau kau whataha i he lotu pia moe fia fia moe whawhita i he peke o tua. Ko toi tu oa eki, ko toi tu mo oni. Hallelujah. So let us come together and join our California Pacific Conference churches across the ocean and across the districts to witness that Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Amen.
Come, let us gather in the one unifying spirit. Unite us, Lord, by your everlasting love. We welcome the one who doubts. We welcome the one who says, unless I see, unless I touch. We welcome those who have heard the good news, the resurrection news, and are filled with fear, locked away, isolated one from another in distant virtual spaces. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live, gather, and worship in unity. We've come to worship in spirit and truth with joy and thanksgiving. Come, let us worship the risen Lord. Mighty God, living God, your eternal love is so deep, so broad, so high, and beyond all thought and imagination. You made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the birth, life, crucifixion, death, and victorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. Give us a spirit of kindness to welcome all people in fellowship and generous affection. Teach us to keep faithful witness and to boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus' resurrection. As we move through the sorrows, trials, and uncertainty of life, strengthen and uphold us with knowledge of the final morning when in the glorious presence of your risen Son, we will share in his resurrection. Amen.
I will be reading Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. The believers shared their possessions. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them, for from time to time those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hi, I'm Reverend Christy Grimaud, Associate Pastor at Foothills in La Mesa, California, and a provisional member, recently approved for full membership and connection as an elder in the 2021 Annual Conference. It has been a long road since I began discerning my call into ordained ministry. And I am grateful for the great community at St. Paul's Coronado, who from the very beginning nurtured me, encouraged me, prayed for me, and helped me to discern the whispers and the nudges that I had been feeling for quite some time. They gave me the space to learn and grow, to question, to listen, and to answer. This was really important for me because I was so hungry for a supportive faith community. The faith tradition I was born into did not affirm female clergy. Now, I could teach Sunday school and work in the kitchen and sing in the choir, but I could not serve as a pastor. I felt a call very early on, but the limitations pressed upon me caused me to pursue a different path. Thankfully, God never let me go and brought many encouraging faith communities into my life that guided me back to the path to God. Communities, especially faith communities, have great power. They can make you or break you. The scripture passage shows a community that makes you. This early Christian community in Acts is one where they are unified in heart and soul. They followed a we versus me philosophy, where they didn't focus on individual gain, but the whole communities. This was not, there was not a needy person among them because they shared all of their possessions with each other. A community like this values unity, generosity, health, and wholeness for all people. Now, I don't know about you, but I have not met a community, or dare I say, a church like this. Have you? Where every single person supports the mission? where people will do whatever it takes to accomplish the mission, even if that means selling their property and giving the proceeds to the church for those in need. Where no one is in need, I have not experienced a faith community like this. Usually, there is great need. This community was not a small community. At this point, there are 5,000 who believed. Now, it seems completely impossible that they could all be unified in one heart and soul. In my experience, getting five people to be unified is a miracle, much less 5,000. Even if this was a hidden utopia that retreats from society, eventually there will be fractures from within. Sooner or later, our human nature will get the best of us. Well, the apostles were certainly human, as well as the 5,000. So how were they able to be a community of love, unity, and generosity? Well, the verse that precedes this passage, verse 31, tells us. It says, when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God 
with boldness. The community prayed for boldness because they had just faced many challenges. Now, the timing was post-resurrection, post-ascension, post-Pentecost even. And the apostles were carrying on Jesus' ministry by preaching and healing people. Peter and John healed a man outside the temple gate. And the chief priests had them arrested. When they were questioned, Peter and John gave credit to the power of the resurrection of Jesus. So many people had witnessed this healing. And the healed man was standing right before them, so they couldn't deny what had happened. The Sanhedrin wasn't sure how to punish them without a revolt, so they told Peter and John they would release them if they promised not to preach in the name of Jesus. Well, Peter redeems himself. Remember when... He denied Jesus three times before the resurrection. Now, post-resurrection, he stands in full confidence and authority, filled with resurrection power, and denies Jesus no more. In verse 20, he said with boldness, we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. Well, they are released anyway and then gather with their community to give thanks to God. They pray together and ask for boldness to carry on Jesus' ministry of healing and restoration. And while they were praying, the Holy Spirit falls upon them and the power of the resurrection is so strong It shakes the house. I want to be part of a community where the Spirit shakes the house. So many communities are asleep, lost, divisive, and downright harmful. We need the power of the resurrection to shake us and transform us into encouraging communities of love. What would our churches look like if we were unified in mission and values? Not unified in political views, nor biblical interpretations, but communities as one based on the gospel of Jesus Christ. What would our churches Look like if the mission was to not have one needy person among them, where every person is restored to wholeness, not just a few. What would our churches look like if we were so generous with our money that we sacrificed our own security for the good of the whole, where we put others' needs above our own? What would our communities look like if every person prayed and prayed for boldness to become a transforming presence in the world where we cannot keep from speaking about the power of Christ? Well, Scripture shows us what they would look like. They would look like this this early Christian community whose sole purpose was to carry on Jesus' ministry of healing and restoration. And the best way they accomplished their mission was to resemble Jesus. A community that resembles Jesus is one that values unity, generosity, and health and wholeness for all people. A community that loves, shares, and encourages. You know I have to ask. You know it's coming. Do our 
communities resemble Jesus? Are we so bold that we can't keep from sharing about Christ transforming love? We should be and can be. A community such as this is not from human construct, but from the Holy Spirit. The resurrection is our source that creates communities like this. We can rise with the risen Christ and be transforming communities of love. With great power, our faith communities can make you into vessels of love that resemble Christ. Amen. Tapu ki he a fio a tau tahi o tua o tau tui o ne a fio i o tau loto loto nga. Fatapu ki a hau ik kau maa ha matapuri. Fatapu ki he tangata ik i pi sope kau puri fagawahe kau fai fikau e konferensi kau maa e ngahi tu unga koto pe o tonu ke fatapua. I confer nisi California Pasifiki. Aguatu e ku fratap mawahe ki a te mo tolu hono koto a pe o mo mamata mai pa mihe ngalu ea. Kai ata te amo e ki itamayo eiki ta iloa ko enu ke whakamonu hoku koloa o ku whakakoloa ki au he confer nisi. Ko kuingoa ko naftala ika te aupa, pea o ko lolotonga fukautua he potungo ue ko West Kauai United Methodist Church he motu ko Kauai, wahenga Hawaii. Pea o ko blau ai fatongia o aho ko enu, ko futapu aki lahia ki a te au, ka umaa aho ki i whamili masiva. E fua kolose ku whai ma ai kosperi a tau eiki ko sisu kalaisi. Pe a kourea whakata e aho koenu te a moe kau apostolo whafutai eiki. Se ono kei fi mea ngā awe aki a hota mai o eiki. Ko ka venga malanga e aho koenu ku pehe mai ke tau taha i a sisu kalaisi. Ke tau taha i a sisu kalaisi. Ki mua be au lawe ki he ka venga malanga o e aho koeni, o ko whakaamu pe ke uki lawe nou nou atu pe ke pui pui tua 
o e talanoa ko eni na hiki tohi e luke. Tohi ngā we wahe to luke he wahe whā, ulake vēsi ke vēsi tonkaha. O talanoa ki ai a luke whekau aki, mano hanga e pita mo sione o whakamo ui, a e tangata heke i he vee te mpare. Pena e mamata to tonu ai a kau takilotu e taimiko ia. Kau takilotu e tempare, kau sātu si, pe mo e kau taula e ki lahi. Pena au taki popula ia ia pita mo sione ke whakamau anga lahi. Pena au whehu ia. Koe whaahinga iwi whe, mo e whaahinga hingoa whe, kua whai aki ai me ani. Pe kono whakarea e taha, koe haha whaahinga ma whai whakalotu. Na mo whai aki ai whakamo ui ko eni. Pe tari ai e pita o pehe, koe huafa o sisu kalaisi pe nasareti aia na mou kalusifai ka kua whukotu'u e hotua mehe pekia. Koe huafa o sisu kalaisi toetu'u ko ia na ne whakamo ui ai tangata heke ko eni. Pe hili no whakawhehu ia ki naua e he kau taki lotu. Na nau tukwange ki naua he na mahino ia ka teki nau tolu. Na mātu aki toko lahi ai kakai ia na nau mamata to tonu ki he whakamo ui na e whai. Pe he i kai ke lava e nau tolu o whakailo pe whakahala ia i he whare hopo a pita mosione. Aki e nau mawhai whakataula e ki pe mawhai whakalau. Pai kuai o nau tukwange a pita mosione whakataha na mohono whakamana mana i ki naua, ki aua na na tōrea aki a hingoa o sisu, te ria na ako me ai hea toko lahi, pe keina a whukau mui mui. Pe tala mai he tala noa, na na fō ki ai ki hona kakai, ai a koe uruaki fō fō siasi whakakaristiane ni na e whukotu'u. Pe na whakamatala e mea na e hoko ki whukakai koe ni, Pe huki ai o whakataha ia i ruaki siasi o whai e nau lotu. Pe koe lotu koe ni, ta mai e luke he tohi ngā we, koe lotu whakaloto lahi. Koe lotu ke nau tuu ta e te teki o malanga ia e toe tuu a sisu kalaisi. Pe koe ola ai e nau lotu o ta wakwai ki reson malanga o e aho koe ni. Aia koe vesi tolu wā ki he tolu ni mā. I hele son malanga o e aha koe ni. O kou whaka āmu pe ke u whaka te whito pe i he tolu i whakau kau ko e ni. Pea koe tau whe kau wai pe ia ki he sāpati hono ua o toe tuu a sisu kalaisi. Whakau kau ulu aki. Ke toe tuu a sisu kalaisi i he tau ngahi mo ui. Whai aki a e tui Kua toe tu a sisu mei he mate. Tala mai e hele soni o aho koe ni, ko ki nau tolu ko toa i he uluaki si a si na e tui, na nau ua wanga taha, moloto taha. Koe haarewa e uhinga a luke ki he ni. Koe uhinga a luke, koe tui o toe tu a sisu he tau ngahi mo ui, koe tui o toe tu a sisu i he tau fa kau kau, ka e mea te pū a ho tau loto. Ke toe tū a sisu i he tau ngāhi whakau kau, ka e mea te pū a ho tau loto. Jesus is resurrected in our minds, but most importantly, in our hearts. O kai tai me ni ihi o kumahino māri e pē toe tū ui a sisu ki he tau whakau kau. Pe tau tala noa mo rea aki hono mārie. Ka oku i kai ke tui ki ai ho tau ngahi loto o tau tolu. Pe koe taimi pe koe oku pehe ai, pe oku i kai rewa koe tui ia. Ka koe ilo pe ke toe tuu a sisu kalaisi. When Jesus is resurrected only in our minds but not in our hearts, then it's only a knowledge of his resurrection, not a belief. 
Pe koe hako naki a luke i he talanoa koe ni. Ke tau hange koe uraki i fuwhua si a si. O toe tu a si isu u he tau moui, fai aki a e tui i he whakau kau, ka koe mea mahu nga taha ko ho tau loto. To allow Jesus to be resurrected in our minds, but most importantly, in our hearts. Ko whakau kau ho no wā u pehe mai. Ko tai miu tau tu wai a si isu he tau moui, fai aki a e tui. E no fo ia leva e kere si lahi i ho tau loto. When we believe that Jesus is resurrected in our lives, His grace will live within us. Tal mai he re so ni i he ves tau to lu. Na e tu u kau kaua au pito e ka apostolo i he na whakamba oni ki he tau tu u au tau eiki ko si su kalai si. Pea koe ko toho pe e uruaki si a si na e tui ko toe tu a si su kalai si. Na e nofo ia ki nau tol ko toho pe e a kere si lai. Not a finite grace, but an infinite grace. Koe haare wa kere si ko e niu tala noa ki a ia luke he tohi ngā ue. Koe kere si ko ia, koe ofa oku laku noa. Koe ofa o ku fuaki more more i kai te eke hano to tongi. It is an undeserved love, an unconditional love that is given freely. Pe ta wa'u mare wai ke whakau kao whaka osi uki malanga koe ni. Pe koe konga fa mui mui beia ure so ni oi aha koe ni. Tala mai e ure so ni Nā nau taha he mea kotoa. He goia kotoa pē nā e masiva, nā e ofai. Goia kotoa pē nā e nofo i kai ki aha pare pare ke malu malu ai, pē ha fei tuu ke ui ko api, nā e ange hono api. Goia kotoa pē nā e mau mea, nā e nā wahe wahe atuia ke teki nā utolu, nā e masiva hona ngahinima. Pe koe ngahi nau nau eni a e fu kere si lahi na e nofo i honau ngahi loto. Pe koe nga tula eni a e ofa o ku laku noa. O ku i kai te lau hataha ko ake. Pe hu mata niu hano ofa i hataha o hi ngako hane tu unga. Ka koe ofa ta e eke hano totoni. O hi ngako hane tu unga. Koe fu kele si lahi na e nofo i hona uloto. Kai ngao e eiki. Koe i misi to tonu eni o e taha i a sisu kalai si. Koe uluaki whakata a taho tau ngahi loto. Koe te tu ue ta masi ko sisu kalai si. I tau ngahi mo ui whakafoi tui tui. Pe koe taimi ko te tu ua sisu e tau ngahi mo ui whakafoi tui tui. O ku hifo lewa e ne kere si o nofo i o tau loto. Pe hanga lewa he kere si ko ia o whaka mā opo opo ki tau tolu ke tau taha i a si isu kais. Si a seo eki, koe māmani o tau nofo ai hangepe o kumau osi mea i, koe fu māmani fuli ki vanueni. This world that we live in today is a very broken and sinful world. I Amerikani, whenga kau kaki ho tau whanua ke whakatahataha i ki tau tolu e ngai whonga keke. Whaka politikare, whaka ekonomika, whaka militare. Mo i kai peke aha ola lelei. Ka ko hota tapua ki a koe pa mua au karistiane. O ku i kai ki tau taha ki tau tolu e ngai whonga o e māmani ko e ni. Kā ko sīsū ka laisi, a ia nā e toi tuu me he mate, ko ia o kune whakatahai ki tau tolu. Ko sīsū o tau tahai kai ngā eki. Amen. In Acts chapter 4, we see 
the early Christians were unified in the manner in which they showed love and cared for their faith community. I was struck by the generosity of these believers, holding back nothing, giving all they had to build the community. During this Easter season, we find ourselves face to face with the challenging circumstances and situations, the noise and the distractions that attack our faith. In the midst of these times, I am asking you to make an offering. Some of you are battling illness. Others are faced with losing homes and jobs. Many are grappling with the loss of important and critical life-sustaining resources. All of us are concerned about the well-being of family members, friends, and other loved ones. Under the burden of all of this, I'm asking you to make an offering because making an offering is essential to worshiping in spirit and in truth. Making an offering is essential to deepening our faith. Making an offering leads us to draw nearer to and walk closely with God. To the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior, in these challenging times, I'm asking you to make an offering to support the ministries of your home church. Let us pray. Holy and sovereign God, we proclaim that Jesus the Messiah lives again. Yet our thoughts are distracted by the many challenges of life. We lose sight of your abundant love. We lose sight of your grace. We lose sight of your mercy. We lose sight of the meaning and joy of Easter. We forget that we are an Easter people. Almighty God, send your spirit. Let it be through the power of your Holy Spirit that we focus on the resurrected Christ, remembering your promise of abundant and eternal life. O oh, great provider, strengthen us to give freely. Strengthen us to give generously. Strengthen us to give cheerfully. Amen.
Friends, our benediction comes from the Bible, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. The God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good gift, so that you may do God's will. May God work among us all that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.